Hello, my name is Dougie Brimson. This week on the Stock Car Show, we'll be featuring two of the oldest formula on the ovals. You'll see them not just racing here at the Northampton International Raceway, but all over Britain. Up here at the Northampton International Raceway Stadium, let's just run through one of those stats again, or a couple of them rather. V8 Chevrolet engines from America, putting out over 600 horsepower. The average Formula One Grand Prix car these days puts out something in the order of 750 brake horsepower, and they run on circuits the two, three, three and a half miles long. These guys are running with very much the same sort of power on a quarter of a mile oval circuit. Just think about that for one second when you see them racing. OK, we get off the blocks, we get towards racing speed just to make sure that everybody can take the start. And these really are the heavy metal boys. There's the number one, the world champion, Frankie Wayman Jr. We just had a word with him. So the racing in New Zealand is heavy stuff, is it? Very gentlemanly here in the UK. 2.21, just uh, making a good barrel run down the bottom of the uh, line. Lots of action here at the Northampton International Raceway Stadium. Listen to those engines roar. Heavy metal indeed, full contact allowed. But to finish first, first you've got to finish. There's a lot of contact coming out of turn four there. There's some uh, weaving and bobbing going on. And 2.21 is over on his roof. That's a very bad accident. You don't see this sort of car going over on its roof very often. Let's have a look at it from a different angle. 2.21 comes out of turn four right over the top of the 83 car of Tony Williams from Buckley and 221 is over on its roof before you can see it. Steve Cooper from Will & All is going to have one hell of a headache. Now look at the front of that car whilst it's on its roof. Can you see the uh, fluid dripping out of the front of it? That means there's going to be an awful lot of concrete dust have to be put down by the marshals. Out comes Steve Cooper. Protective brace still intact. That's a good sign. So St John Ambulance aren't going to be uh, doing an awful lot of activity to keep him on the straight and narrow, which is more than can be said for his car. The marshals try to turn it on its side again. Will it be back in the race? So we've got a crushed roof now, but what about the rest of it? Back onto four wheels. Oh, game over. Look at that buckled wheel. I don't think Steve Cooper's car is going to be taking any further part in this race. Now, as the marshals put down the concrete dust, let's have a word with the driver. Right, we saw that happen. That looked pretty scary. What was that like? Well, uh... Still a bit shook up actually. I just remember going into that bottom bend. I just back end come out a bit. Just come out of that um, that top bend then, and I just it just went then. Just went straight from me. Well, did it? Did you clip another car? I think I did. Yeah. I remember going up, coming back down. I I don't know whether another car hit me then from the inside. To um, I just remember seeing that fence. Was it over before you realised it? It went quite long, actually. I mean, I've rolled over before and it, in my me, uh, me Mini, and it's quite quick, but that lasted quite quite some time, actually. So what sort of damage on first examining has it done to the car? Um, I noticed the petrol and the oil was dripping out. Aerofoil, and I, I didn't see anything else, really. We'll have a good look when we get back to the pits now. A somewhat stunned Steve Cooper there from Will & All goes back to the pits. He won't be taking any further part in this race, but there is a consolation that he might just get himself back into contention for. And we've still got a race to complete here on North Ants Motorsport. The Formula One stocks heat number one. Once more, we get under starters' orders. Once more, we fly around the circuit with the heavy metal boys. American Chevrolet engines, V8. Look at that concrete dust. You try hitting that at around 70 miles an hour and breathe at the same time. You'll find it's rather difficult. So, plenty of activity, 495 going through. You just saw him uh, burning off quite a lot of tyre smoke there. That was John Kayser from Saffron Walden in Essex. And the Phil Wheelton car in number six. Now, this is where a real dice is uh, in unfolding. Number six, the yellow top car, 495, seems to be burning off tyres as he comes around turn four. He's done that a couple of times this afternoon. Frankie Wayman Jr. going through the field there, barreling through. Looks a very low-slung Formula One car that he's driving. He's not world champion for nothing. Just look at the guy's technique. Tight into the corners, wide on the exit, and gets the hammer down big time. Number one, looking for a win here in heat one for the Formula Ones. Real heavyweight stuff. A little bit of slidery going on down in the lower order of the field. In fact, that's big tank slapping going on for Neil Mellish from Worksop. That'll have given him a wake-up call. Frankie Wayman's about to give 72 a wake-up call of his own. 72 just being deposed, James Yarrow from Market Harbour. Frankie Wayman goes wheel-to-wheel -wheel down into Turn 1. 
exits on the tight line. Listen to those engines roar. Not a place to be if you're faint of heart. Frank with Kiwainman going through. Not many laps left. 495 going very, very sideways, burning off a lot of tyres there. And I think this is, yes, it's last lap time for Frankie Wayman. Takes the win in heat one. Business as normal now. Who's going to get second position? Is it going to be 72 or 6? 72. 72 loses a tyre almost on the line. And I think that's given second position to Phil Wilton. Now, in Formula One stock car racing, what you see out on track is only half the story. Because the guys that work here in the pits are what really carry this sport along. Now, I'm here with Nigel Parker, who's one of the members of the crew on the 250 Keith Chambers car. Nigel, how many hours a week do you put into looking after this car? Well, just lately, it's been every night. Yeah? It's around and a half, 11 at night. Have you, the last you, two weeks. Did you actually build this car? No, I didn't. It's a Clive Linson chassis, this is. Yeah? Now, what does your, you know, your missus think about you doing this? I don't think she minds, because she can get to watch what she wants on the telly when I'm in the garage, so yeah? it doesn't bother her.